things are heating up for TVs in 2020. I mean, this TV was already really important, but with a whole bunch more competition coming out soon, I think it's more important than ever before. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're unboxing and setting up the Hisense H9G. Now the H8G was already a pretty great TV. This one supposed to be a little bit better and for just a little bit more money. What we're looking at here is about 180 zones for the 65 inch. I think it's 132 zones for the 55 inch and about $200 price difference at the 55 inch level and 250 at the 65 inch level. I think this particular TV goes for about 950, under $1,000 for what should be some quality HDR. With those extra zones and higher brightness, this one is rated up to 1,000 nits and I bet it outperforms that. We should see more color volume, better black levels, just a better experience, so let's dig in. Here's everything that comes in the box and can we, can we talk about this for a second? What? Look, I get stand design needs to change and people get bored, but this is ridiculous. It looks like a gigantic can opener or yield sign or something, I don't know. We'll see how it looks once it's on the actual TV, but those are the two feet, remote, batteries, screws, power cable, and some unnecessary literature. All right, I still maintain this is kind of ridiculous, but at least it's easy to install. So we've got a couple of slots in the bottom of the TV, just push that in there, and then a couple of screws to get it nice and secure. Okay, we're almost set up. Here's the back of the TV. This is a good opportunity to talk about a couple of different things. One, we've got four HDMI inputs, three on the side, one on the rear, and then there's some composite connections. You don't see those very often anymore, uh, right below that. And then we've got some cable management, sort of. There's some clips along the back channel of the TV that runs down to a clip by the feet, and then it just kind of dangles there. But hey, at least there's some cable management. One more thing about those HDMI inputs, they're all limited to 4K 60 hertz, and it doesn't do EARC. It's an ARC port, at least labeled that way. We'll test that a little bit later. But that means that we're not gonna see variable refresh rate. Uh, we're not gonna see 4K 120 gaming features out of this TV. Not a whole lot of those HDMI 2.1 related items being supported by this particular television. I do suspect it'll have nice low input lag, so we'll test that later as well, but not set up for next-gen gaming. Now we're here with the front of the TV, and you know what, I'm gonna do a little bit of backpedaling here on this stand. It's growing on me. It's less obtrusive when you only see half of it coming out of the front of the TV. Also, I really like the deep stance. I mean, you can get any TV to wobble, but the fact of the matter is that deep stance provides a sense of security, so I like that. Also, the bezels on this TV are, well, first of all, they're almost non-existent, but they're also recessed from the glass on the panel, so it has a really sleek look, both from up close and far away. And then finally, you'll want to notice that down here, there is a little sticker uh, that shows this has a built-in microphone in the bezel. You can turn it off, but the idea is that that allows you far field uh, access to Google uh, Assistant so that you can not necessarily have to pick up your remote in order to search for content or ask for information. So before we turn this guy on, I wanna try and give you some sense for the effectiveness of the anti-glare here. We've got a couple of studio lights on. It's an overcast day, but we've got our diffuser shade open uh, back behind Dan there. I'm sure you can see Dan, wave to the people, Dan. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I think that once we light this TV up, we're not gonna have any problem with glare. All right, we've lit this puppy up and it's time to get started with the setup. Android TV, you know the drill. I'm gonna go ahead and use my phone to allow it to sign into my Google account. That's gonna make a few things easier. Definitely be careful about what you consent to. I am just consenting to almost everything here just to get through the setup, but take a second, read this stuff, know what kind of information you're sharing and be okay with it. Uh, otherwise, turn it off. I am not gonna allow it to turn on these three features right now, and that's because I want complete control of this TV. I don't want anything automated, but we will turn those on later and see how well they work in the full review. And here we go, we are set up with the Android splash screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into settings just for this particular portion of the TV. We'll have to adjust more of this later. Um, hit picture mode. Uh, we're in e energy savings, so we wanna turn that off. I'll go with uh, theater day for now. Automatically color temperature changes, which is what we would expect. Go into the advanced settings. Uh, overscan needs to be turned off. Thank you very much. 
Uh, motion enhancement is set to clear. I'm going to turn that off. Motion clearness is now off. Noise reduction is at medium. Uh, I'm going to leave these just where they're at. That's fine. Active contrast. I'm going to leave this off for now, but I am curious what kind of an effect it will have later. And that is our standard setup for this splash screen. Now I'm going to go through the process of hitting various HDMI inputs, make sure everything carries over, reset them if they don't. I'm also going to go into uh, some apps and make sure that I've got the settings that I want. I also want to open some Dolby Vision content and some HDR content on YouTube and check the settings there. So let's do that. Now that we're in the Netflix app, I am not playing content yet, but I do want to check the settings again. So we'll pull that up here, go into picture. Theater day still, good. I'm happy to see that. Although the sharpness has been brought down to five, which is interesting. It was seven earlier, if I'm not mistaken. Double check, my motion is still turned off. All right, that looks good. Now let's start a Dolby Vision title here. And you see the Dolby Vision badge, so you know that we're in the right mode. I'm just gonna pause this so we don't get hit with copyright claim. And I notice it looks like there's some motion smoothing on, so let's definitely check that out. We're in Dolby Vision Bright, which I assure you is going to be very, very bright. And hey, look, a Dolby Vision custom mode. I like that. We'll definitely dig into that a little bit later. I wanna see what that looks like. Whoa, that is super cold color temperature, not a fan. I'm gonna go with Dolby Vision Dark because this TV is looking super bright right out of the box. Go into advanced settings. Nope, motion enhancement is not on. So uh, might just be the content there. Well, that's great. Dolby Vision, more options. I like that a lot. We'll definitely check that out soon. Let's get into YouTube really fast. Okay, so we've opened up YouTube, started a 4K HDR video, just pressed pause for the moment so that we can check out the picture settings and we're in HDR theater mode by default, which I'm very glad to see. That's exactly what we want. Uh, so right off the bat, I'd have to say I'm enjoying the fact that there's very little adjustment that needs to be made once you do the basic adjustments. That's far easier setup than I've experienced in the past. And I'm really pleased about that because it means that with just a couple of basic adjustments, you can be assured that you're gonna be getting the best experience no matter what content you're watching. So first impressions, this TV zings. I mean, wow, it is zesty and bright and uh, it just really sparkles. It lights up the whole room. Somebody get me some sunglasses. We're gonna have to tone it down a little bit, I think, uh, but we'll do a calibration, check out how the color looks when we're done with that. That'll tell us a lot. Also, it's crushing blacks, no doubt. I just don't know how much it's crushing them, so we'll test that as well. But the bottom line is this TV is doing exceptionally well for the price. Again, $950 for the 65, I think it's 700 for the 55. That's ridiculous value. Oh, and by the way, Android TV runs perfectly fine on this TV. So that's another really great step in the right direction. Right off the bat, I think this TV is fantastic. Like if you've been thinking about getting it, like probably go get it. You're not gonna do much better, especially down at that price level. But any flaws that are in this TV, we're gonna have to dig deep to find them. Keep that in mind. I look forward to doing so in the full review, but for now, wow. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about the H9G so far? And also by the time this airs, the TCL TVs will have been announced. So how are you feeling about that? Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you feel. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And as always visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.